Hello everyone, welcome back to Baldur's Gate 3 5th Edition Edition Duo Rogues. Last time we had an incident with the Owl Bear, and now we are in desperate need of a long rest. As we get ourselves back out to the forest, Astarian has 1 HP. So we are going to avoid crossing the river at all costs, because... He would take acid damage thanks to the flowing water. So we're going to try and find a way around. Hopefully this way we can get over the bridge. So we'll see if we can get these two moving in tandem. I'm only stealthing because I'm extra paranoid that we'll instigate the attack at the gates of the Blighted Village. But once we're past these corpses, we'll be just fine to run back towards the Druid's Grove, get a long rest in us. Apparently Amunian does not want to make her own way across. Breathe deep and move. Step quick. All right. So if we just follow this path all the way to its end, we will get to one of our teleporters so we can long rest. The map is showing us Zevlor because we were asked to deal with Zevlor and get the tieflings to leave the camp. Don't know that we'll be doing that, but the map is still showing them as an objective. Light on my feet. We can stop sneaking on this side as well. And then if we, between the two of these guys, we can have them both navigate over to this section of wall here that has the carvings on it. Wonder if the gods are watching me. I don't think they probably are right now. I think they've got more important things to be doing. But maybe as we get to like level seven or something, maybe we'll start being closer to god tier play but we've made it to the ancient rune circle and so by, by my fifth edition rule set we can now make sure we're all bundled together and then go to camp and end of the day we'll get our spell slots back we will get our health back any skills we've used astarian would like a chat we will indulge him It's quite a sight. The star. <laughs> I could take or leave your chin. They are beautiful tonight. I can see the stars from Baldur's Gate, of course. But not with such clarity. It got me thinking. Reflecting on what tonight <laughs> when, when we meet this goblin priestess. Will she know how to bring the worm under control? Will this little adventure of ours be over? Astarian's really getting some up and down action, isn't he? It doesn't have to be over. We can still travel together. Good. I don't want you to run off just yet. You're quite the ally after all. Traversing Avernus, surviving the crash, surviving everything that's followed. I'm not easily impressed by people, but you're stronger than I gave you credit for. I have many talents if you want to explore them. <laughs> A delicious thought, but... What are you waiting for? The right moment. I'm sorry. I... I need to clear my head. I'll see you later, I'm sure. Sleep tight. He's very bruised and battered at the moment, isn't he? Well, after his strange up and downs, we can consider our long rest, get back to health and carry on our adventure, and see if this blossoming relationship travels any further soon. 
The only other thing we could think to do while we're here is dump off any of our extra supplies into a barrel or crate so we don't need to carry them around quite as much. Open up. Have I designated a food store yet? I have not. Can I drag this barrel over? Alright, this will be our extra food store, so we don't have to use all of our inventory weight carrying it all around. We've got three there spare. We'll keep two for emergencies. And if we sort by type to refresh its order of everything, we can also take out the sausage, the cheese. We'll keep the water, because the water can be thrown at fires and other surfaces. And that looks like all the food that we have. Oh, we have the fish. The owlbear egg we will keep for selling because that's got 750 value. And we'll keep the good berry because it actually heals HP as well as being camp supplies. But the rest of that can stay in the barrel. Then we can hop on into bed. We'll use... Only one of those, please, not both of them. Take ourselves a full rest. Where are you? As the mysterious voice whispers to us. And we are back where we were. We have full health, full hit points, and everything else. So, where do we want to go now? What to do? Let's be on my way. We did some of the goblin village already, didn't we? Step forward. Did we deal with the windmill? We must have done because Astarian was changed into a Tangent dark a elf in the previous episode, I think. I guess we could always check our quest log. Ask the goblin priestess for help. Save the rescued ease. Karga wants us to make the tieflings leave. She fears the grove cannot support them and itself. Save Saza. We got them out of the grove in one piece. Saza told her to meet her at the camp. Finish the masterwork weapon. Search the cellar. We now have the tome. Arabella is complete. And the pale elf. We met a strange elf who has been infected with a parasite. He was hostile at first, but agreed to join us when we learned we were infected too. So we don't have any active quests right now. Should mind my step. So it seems like as good a time as any to go back in and offload any of our extra armor that we've gained, any of the extra weapons that we don't need. I was told that after selling stuff, we can go back in and steal back all the cash, depending on how much weight it is. But I'm gonna not take too many liberties with abusing pickpocketing. I'll just take the occasional item that I want or need. Speaking of which, the hag downstairs has something we might want. But first, we'll see Aaron. Anything else? See your wares, please. But please, remember, you're not the only one in need. Right, stuff to get rid of. Jewelry. Then, Astarian seems to have most of everything else. I don't think we need this model of saloon. Bloodstone can go. Empty potion bottle. Necklace. Alright, I think that's everything on this side, because we want generally the most of the potions and whatnot. Here, though, the... Vision of the Absolute. We do have the ability to wield this. So I might hold on to it in case we figure out what type of creatures we can do 2d6 piercing damage to extra. But plus one nature we can hold on to. This not proficient in medium armor, the Oak Father's Embrace, can definitely go. And I guess that's basically it. I don't know why I thought we kind of had more going on than that. 
We do want this plus one leather armor still, but that's 1,500 gold that we don't have. Sylvanus be with you. And then, if we just head on down here a moment, is she still here? I think I saw her there. There is Auntie Ethel, trader of quirks and sundries. And Octa. Now, Auntie Ethel has something we want. I wanted this one. Who has the better sleight of hand? Plus five. And plus five. So we're equal on that front. Because she has something that we want. But there is nowhere here to hide to try and steal it. if we chat to her for a moment. Ah, uh, if it isn't the talk of the camp. Thank goodness you came along when you... Oh. Interesting to see you strutting about in the sun. Ain't seen that before. And Auntie Ethel's seen her fair share. Still, you're looking a little pasty, love. I've just the thing to perk you up. Does she know that Astarian is a vampire spawn? I've not seen that one before. Uh, we're, we're just here to trade. No, aren't you a perceptive one, madam? I'm just curious about curiosities is all. And you seem like quite the curiosity. Aha! You take a sup of that and you'll feel right as rain, sweetie. A sip of a sup. This is an expertly made healing potion. Nicely done. Oh, stop with the sweet talk. Here, take the end of the bat, just in case. I'm sorry to go on about it, but are you all right? You're looking awful peaky. Astarian is caught in a loop, taking the potion over and over again. Just bone weary, you oh. know. Not a good day. Half the camp acts like a bunch of screaming brats. I'm tempted to smack them all on the backside and tell them to kiss and make up. Not that they'd listen to little old me. Anyway, do you need anything? I have a few odds and ends for sale. Show me your wares. Hey, bother. So she has. The Spell Thief. An uncommon martial two-handed ranged weapon does 1d8 piercing damage as a longbow, but once per short rest, you can regain a first level spell slot when you land a critical roll with the Spell Thief. Now, of course, our longbows do 1d8 damage, and we have first level spell slots to spend. So if we could get back one extra spell slot per short rest, rather than having two or three spell slots as we have now, we could have four five or even six if we get one back on our original rest then after the first rest and after the second short rest so that is something we greatly want we don't have the 925 for it at the moment but we do still have that owlbear egg that's worth 326 and i still want barter not trade so if we wanted Did it? Did the Albert egg just disappear? We can't buy it back now. But if we wanted the Spell Thief, 851 gold we would need. That's 732. So we just need to make up a little more. And let's sort by weight. No, sorry, by value. When the wearer has 50% hit points or less, they don't provoke opportunity attacks. Scroll of Silence. I don't think we can cast Silence. And we have a bunch of them. That gets us very nearly there. Two extra golds worth. What's the 
most basic thing we have. Sausage. And a spare torch. We got three gold back. So in that case, I will take the spell thief. Leaves us without cash, but... I think we'll be okay. Obviously, I'd love the hill giant strength and the potion of invisibility and all the rest of that stuff, but right now we don't have the cash for it, of course. Take care now, sweetie. How much did Astarian get in potions? Just some basic healing potions, it seems. I don't see any others in the inventory. Where's the rest of our potions? Oh, there's 17 of them there. That'll do it. We should probably split those. They can go over there. Give those a bit of a more even split. Then Astarian currently has a plus one weapon. So Amunian can take Spell Thief. I don't know if between us we could swap it back and forth and gain its benefits multiple times. We will find out down the line, I suppose. Uh, should we go and see Zevlor while we're here? Don't think it could hurt. At the ready. We also have that spare longbow that we could get rid of now if we wanted to. I thought that door was just going to open for me magically, but no, I do have to click the button. Here we are in the secluded chamber. There's Zevlor. Just before we get into a conversation with him, let's My offer ourselves some guidance as if we had done it just in hiding. I heard what happened. Thank you for protecting the child. If the druids are this far gone, then it's not just goblins we have to fear. So we can risk violence here or face it for certain on the road. Quite the choice, isn't it? So, I don't think I've ever done the need to leave quest line, so let's see if we can convince them of that. I'm grateful, but there's still an army of goblins out there. I won't expose my people to that. Tell me, what do you know of the man they call the Blade of Frontiers? I've never heard of him. The Blade's a legend. A monster hunter. He showed up just before you arrived. But even he advised against facing the goblins head on. He proposed another way. He believes the goblins will scatter if we kill their leaders. But he needs help. You've proven yourself a capable warrior. I'm sure he could use you. Uh, well, can you pay us? I suppose so. We don't have much. But we'll scrape together whatever we can. Make sure it's enough. Of course. Everything we have. Anything we can give you, we will. You'll find the blade in the caves. He's training the children in some basics. Good thing, too. They may well have to put it to use. He's got awesome eyes. With the actual fire burning within them. No, sir. Right. But if there's a clear path past those goblins, they'll find it. We'll leave the locked chest, even though it doesn't seem to be like it would be thieving, because it's not red. Right tool will do the trick. Well, maybe we'll have a quick go. We are rogues after all. Battle worn blade. Martial wele melee weapon, 1d8 slashing, 1d10 slashing two-handed. I wouldn't think we would be proficient with this, but it doesn't say that we're not, which is weird. But if we get to this screen, I'm sure now it will. No. Oh, it's because we have longsword proficiency as an elf, don't we? Of course we do. Right, then... If not over, then through. Apparently we can't convince them to leave immediately, so goblins are going to be in our future regardless. 
How close are we to level four? Over halfway, but still a reasonable way to go. Because there are some harpies to deal with down the way. But I want to save that for when we are a little bit stronger. And when we increase our dexterity by two points each, then our armor class will go up by one, our to hit chance will go up by one, our damage rolls will go up by one. It's a good time all around, really. So, where are we going to go now? I think we could probably head on up towards the toll road from this side. There is a tiefling there that would like our help. And there's lots of supplies up in that direction as well. So, we need to get over in that direction there. We'll send our characters to autopilot that route and I'll jump to that point. Of course, Astarian stops here at the riverbank. Keep your distance now. We can force him through the water. He'll take one acid damage. And then the second round he's in the water, he takes two acid damage. If he'd stayed there for another round, it would be three acid damage and so on. Let's be quick. But we've got up through there. Uh, seems we have not dealt with Scratch yet. Tread carefully. But Scratch can stay where he is for a minute. We're going to jump onto this rock. And then across to that bit of shore. More running water for Astarian. But now he is out and dry. And then if we waltz down here, we can see a lot of blood. A toll collector's key. A key. Wonder what is A couple of piles of bones. Not suspicious at all. And then over here, we have Karlak. Hold up. One more step and I'll put a bolt through your eye. No sudden movements or you're dead. You looking for me? I have no idea who you are. You just happened to stumble across me in the arse end of nowhere. Bullshit. Tell me what you're doing here. Now. Right, we have intimidation or persuasion. Neither with proficiency, unfortunately. But we really have no idea what's going on. Well, we're, we're rogues. We'll be trying to be intimidating. That's gone well. Not a hard check. Hmm. If you bite as hard as you bark, we might get along. I might even have a job for you. I'm in a tight spot. I might not be able to get out of it alone. Uh, if you, if I help you, what's in it for me? That's our roguish mo. You'll get a friend who'll put a dent in the skull of anyone who pisses you off. All right, you've got my attention. All right. Come on over here. But fair warning, you might find this hard to believe. I mean, if I talked you through our last couple of days, we could be on par. I'm a fugitive. I escaped the hells, and the bastards who were holding me there were trying to take me back. Hey, I was there not long ago. Really? You're serious? As she winces, agony shoots through you. As if your bodies shared the same wound. Then you're lost in visions of demonic armies. As you tear through a landscape of fire and blood. The Blood War. You saw it from above as the Nautiloid passed through Avernus. This woman was on the front line. Stop! What was that? You were inside my head. That was terrifying. And that was one of my good days. The bad ones would knock you sick. Now tell me what you just did. Before I make sure you can never do it again. I didn't do it on purpose. That's what I thought. There's something inside of you. I felt it. One of those 
God's damned worms from the ship. I didn't think anyone else had survived. Not many. Poor bastards. I boarded in Avernus. That ship was my way out. You must have got clear of the crash site in a hurry. You're lucky I did. The place would have been crawling with cultists if I'd stuck around. And they'd have dragged us all back to Avernus. What makes you so important? I was a prisoner, forced to fight in the blood war. The eternal battle between bad and worse. Most souls in Avernus are just meat for the grinder, but not me. I held my own. More than. Turns out that I've got a knack for killing demons. <laughs> and I enjoy it. And that made me a valuable asset. The devils don't like to lose their assets. Uh, judging by the wound, I'm guessing they found you. Yeah, not far from here. Gang of cultists cornered me in an abandoned toll house. I took out a couple, but I need them all dead. I'll look into that. Oh wait, if I do this, what do I get in return? A friend smashing in skulls. You get a friend who spat in Baphomet's eye and lived to tell the tale. I'll look into it. Make them scream. I come with you just to see them bleed. But I'm too busy bleeding myself. I'll be here when you're done. All right, we have a job. Swift as my feet can carry me. Hopefully one that our pair of rogues can handle with ample survivability. But we will see when we get there. Something good here, I hope. There's the dead toll collector. Some good cash for us. And then up here, we find the toll house. There is a trader in Cyril. But she is also part of the collective here that are those that we want to be rid of. So I think that's where we're going to end things for right now. And then next time, we'll jump into this 2v4 fight. But thank you ever so much for watching. If you're enjoying the series, please do consider subscribing or hitting that like button. If you have any questions or comments, you can put them down below. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.